active reasoning conjectures and counterexamples. So you will be able to use reasoning conjectures and counterexamples to solve problems. So let's practice drawing and labeling figures again. So points D, E, and F are collinear. What does collinear mean? Same line. So they must be on the same line. So I draw a line with D, E, and F on it. you guys are paying attention. Angle 1 and 2 form a linear pair. Who remembers what a linear pair is? <coughs> what? Form a line. We're going to draw a line, and it has to be two angles that form a line. So I'm going to put an angle marking in there and just call this one and that two. They form a linear pair. Okay, angle three and angle four are adjacent. Adjacent means they are next to each other they share that interior side so next to share interior side so they just have to share an interior side so these two angles share this blue side here doesn't matter how, what size you make them but you see how it shares this blue side here? I put a blue line here that you can barely see. So that's angle three and four. They're next to each other and they share an interior side. Again, you could have made it like any measurements there, but. <coughs> Bless you. Okay. Non adjacent. So two angles that are not next to each other, not next to. Do not share a side. It's not 180. Complementary is 90 degrees. And they're two 90 degree angles. So if I have one angle here, how many degrees do we want to make this angle? Tell me a degree. 50 degrees. So what would the other angle then have to be? 40. I don't even know. They're not technically next to each other. They're two different angles. One's 50 degrees, sorry, and one's 40 degrees, which means they are 90. They are complementary. Okay, so what questions do you have about those words? Again, for those of you that need to retake, you've seen your grade. If you, the thing is, even if you got like an 80%, you might be able to retake. So if you want to come in and see me, and do your tracker to see, because if you bombed like one objective, you can technically retake that objective. For those of you that have been here, those of you that are sophomores, you know that how that works. Freshmen, if you want to retake and you didn't do well and you got less than a 80% or it's by objective. So it's 80% per objective. So you might be able to retake an objective if you got an 80, 85%, okay? Otherwise, come see me. We will track it together. We will get started on reviewing and you only have to retake an objective at a time, which makes it a little bit easier. All right, when you're ready, go ahead and flip unless you have questions for me. All right, inductive reasoning is reasoning that uses a number of specific examples to arrive at a plausible conclusion. So the big thing here is specific examples. So you use what is around you to get to the conclusion. A conjecture is a statement reached by the inductive reasoning. So what you believe, your plausible conclusion, is your conjecture. So what you think based on your examples. So that plausible conclusion is 
considered the conjecture, which is a statement reached by your inductive reasoning. By your examples, you're able to come up with a conclusion, which is known as a conjecture. So make a conjecture about the next number in the sequence, and then we're going to explain why. So Olivia, for number one, what conjecture can you make about the next number in the sequence? What do you think is going to be next? What? Yeah, so 10,000. So each time another zero is added. Okay, what do you think is next there, Devin? And why do you think that? Why is that your conjecture? Because each time it's going up by two. Each time it is doubled or going up by two. Hunter, what is your conjecture about number three? 25. And why did you decide it was 25? It's going up by five. You could also put in signs every other one. So it goes up by five and flip signs every other one. Desiree, for number four, what do you think the next boxes are going to look like? So we have a one by one, a two by two, a three by three. So what do you think it's going to be? A four by four. So it goes up by the one. I have terrible drawing here. So each time, each side adds one. So go ahead and write that down and see what questions you have for me. See what questions you have for me. Do you understand what a conjecture is? Do you understand what inductive reasoning is? So read those definitions and make sure you still understand that. See what questions you have for me. Inductive reasoning has to come from specific examples, just so you guys remember that. All right, so let's do some with inductive reasoning conjectures with some geometric examples here. So make a conjecture about each value or geometric relationship. Use examples or a drawing to support your conjecture. The product of two odd numbers, what is your conjecture? The product, what is product first of all? When you multiply two odd numbers, what happens? Two odd numbers are going to make it negative. So give me two odd numbers. Let's do a few two odd numbers. Give me two. Give me an odd number. Seven. Okay. Give me a different odd number, Kylie. Five. Seven times five is perfect. Okay. Harmony, give me an odd number. Do you, do you, odd. <laughs> Harmony's like, what am I thinking? Don't worry. I have a lack of sleep, so I understand where you're coming from. Abby, give me another one. 
you said nine? So that's 27. Okay, let's do one more example here. Gabe, give me an odd number. Bigger than maybe 10 this time. Okay. What do you notice about all of our answers? They're all what? The product is so it seems like our conjecture is that the product is always going to be a odd number. That's just a conjecture. That doesn't mean it's true or false. That's what you're assuming based on the few examples you have there. So the product is always odd. Good job, Greg. And our examples are over there. You could make a few conjectures about these ones. So let's draw the picture. So we have the midpoint of NQ is P. What is something I know if P is the midpoint? If P is the midpoint? What would you say? Sorry, I can't hear you. You need to speak louder. The air conditioning is on. So N and Q are endpoints. Okay, that's one conjecture you can make. There's multiple ones. So N and Q are endpoints. What's another thing you can make a conjecture about for this one? When you know it's the midpoint. Olivia? NP is the same as PQ. It's in the middle. What can you say about P? P is... The midpoint, which makes it, what word do we use? Central or, what word did, I sh did we define? Between. So P is between P and Q. Thank you. Life is rough. Okay, angle one and angle two form a right angle. What do we know about a right angle? Yeah. So the two of the angles form a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to make a 90 degree angle. What do I know needs to go through that to form angle one and angle two? Yeah. Yeah, a ray, technically, right? Because it has one arrow. So this is angle one and this is angle two. So what do you know? What is a conjecture you can make about those? Helena? Angle 1 plus angle 2 plus 90. So the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 has to equal 90 degrees. Okay. What's another conjecture you can make? Logan? 90 degrees minus the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. Okay, so just moving that 90 degrees. So did you subtract angle 2 or angle 1? Angle What? So you said 90 minus the measure of angle 1 is the measure of angle 2? Okay. What is an angle called when it's less than 90 degrees? Acute. So what are angle 1 and 2 have to be? They both have to be acute, right? Because they're going to have to be less than 90 degrees. So angle 1 and angle 2 are acute angles. Okay, what does it mean to be a vertical angle? What? They're opposite. What do you know, though? How does a vertical angle form? What, need, what do you need? Two what? You need an X, so that's two what? Lines. Two lines. So two lines with angles opposite each other. So give me a conjecture, Kylie, if those are vertical angles. And, uh, angle three and four are 
Yeah, the measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 4 are equal to each other because they are vertical angles. All right? So that's probably about, I mean, you could probably say other things, but that's probably the best conjecture you can make there. All right, so see what questions you guys have for me so far about drawing the pictures. Does everybody understand why we're drawing the pictures? Some of you on the test, um, it was like the second to last page. It was like the bottom one, and it had something about being between or something like that, and it said to draw and label the picture. Most, like, I had a good amount of people in both classes not draw it or label it, and then they did it wrong. If you would have drawn and labeled the picture, you probably would have, did, would have done, it, done it right because you guys had a good idea with what your work was showing me. So in geometry, drawing pictures is very important, okay? All right, when you're ready, go ahead and flip to the next slide. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about are counterexample. A counterexample is just one. You only need one example that shows a conjecture is false. It can be a drawing, number, or a statement. You don't need more than one. If you can come up with one thing that is false, then it is false, okay? So that is called a counterexample. So for example here, a number is odd, then the number is prime. So 1, 3, 5, 7 are odd and also prime. However, 9 is odd, but it isn't prime, right? So 9 is your counterexample because that's one example that works. This conjecture is false. 9 is the counterexample. Then it's, this one down here, it says OMN, OMN and are, is congruent to PML. Conjecture is that OMN and PML are vertical angles. Well, we can draw a picture, right? This picture is drawn off to the side here where they're congruent, but are they vertical angles? So sometimes images are what you can use for a conjecture. So this shows that the conjecture is false because you can have, draw a counterexample. So you can either write it in words or draw an image is what this is saying here. Do we have questions on that? Okay. So let's go on to counterexamples. So determine whether each conjecture is true or false. If a conjecture is false, give a counterexample. So that's the angle symbol. So that says angle R and angle S are supplementary. So angle... I don't really like that angle symbol. Sorry. Angle R and angle S are supplementary. Okay, is that true or false if your conjecture is that angle R and angle S are congruent? Is that true or false? Raise your hand if what you think and tell me a counterexample if you think it's false. So first of all, what is supplementary? Kathy? I just called you Kathy. What is going on with me? Casey. It equals to um, 180 degrees. 180 degrees. Okay. So do the two angles have to be congruent to equal 180 degrees? Morgan, do they have to be congruent to equal 180 degrees? No. What could our angle measures be? What are two things that add to 180 that aren't the same? Yeah, our angles could be 170 degrees and 10 degrees, and they're still supplementary. So they are not congruent, but supplementary. Logan, did I write something wrong? Well, what is that, like, weird symbol in front of butt? <laughs> False. Our angles could be 170 and 10 degrees, so they are not supplement, or this is not congruent. Oh. I was trying to figure out where the word butt was in my sentence here. Um, congruent. Remember, and that's an important thing to know because we're going to be using that a lot, especially as we get to proof, so that's a good question. All right. Given A, B, and C are on the same line, they're collinear, A, B plus B, C equals A, C. So collinear means on the same line. Is that true or false? So some of us are thinking true. Does anybody have a counterexample? K, 
Katie, are you thinking false? What is your counterexample? Yeah, does it tell you which one has to be in, in the middle? Does it tell you which one has to be in the middle? No. So if that was the case, then this would be B A B plus A C equals B C, right? So that is false. So since it doesn't tell you which one is in the middle, since it doesn't tell you which one is in the middle, this is false. If it had said B was in the middle, then this would be true, okay? Again, you just need one counterexample. It doesn't matter. I just always go alphabetical when I write things. Given AB is congruent to BC, B is the midpoint of AC. True or false? And if you think it's false, give me a counterexample. True or false? So think about that. Talk to the person next to you. What are you thinking? True or false? <laughs> Or around you, and what do you think? See if somebody has a counterexample for you. Austin, talk to some people. What are you thinking? I think it's true. You think it's true? Okay. <laughs> Almost everybody thought it was true, but I saw one counterexample while I was walking around. So is this false then? Yep. Austin, what was your counterexample? Huh? You wrote something down on there. Wasn't I looking at that? That is technically how you drew it is false. If you draw it like this, Technically, those are two different lines, right? Yeah. So is that a midpoint if it's on two different lines? No. So those are congruent. That's what those... So as Logan likes to call symbols weird symbols, this means congruent when they have the same markings, okay? So you guys are aware of that. So they can be the same but not a midpoint. Midpoint needs to be along the same line. Okay, segment GH and JK form a right an angle intersecting at P, which means that GH and JK are perpendicular. That's what this symbol is. This means perpendicular, which means forms a 90 degree angle. Is that true or false? So GH and JK form a right angle, so this is G, H, J, K, and they intersect at point P. So is GH perpendicular to JK? So they form a right angle. Is that true or false? This one is true. You can't give a counterexample for this one. All right. I'm going to get homework out to you guys.